Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you very much for our love and for our fellowship together. We are asking, O oh Lord, that you continue to bless your people. And we pray, O oh Lord, your blessing will abide upon your people. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We are talking about ministerial progress. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. That's the intention, that's the goal, and that is uh, what we have. So that you are not the only one that will see your profit or see your progress. Other people too will be able to know that by the grace of God, our pastor, our leader, our minister, our overseer is growing. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. As we talk about progress, we're talking about growing. And as we look at our very lives, we will see that there is capacity to grow. And there is a necessity to grow. And if you look at the ministers in the Old Testament and the New Testament, you will see quite a lot of remarkable growth. Pick Moses, for example. And look at the earlier behavior, earlier interaction, earlier complaints. And look at his later life, you will discover growth. I want you to look at Joshua. When Moses was still with him, and you see the comments and see the things he did. And then you look at him in the book of Joshua. You will see the growth. I want you to look at David. And as you look at the earlier life of David. And the later life and ministry of David. Again you will see growth. Come to the New Testament. And look at the disciples, the apostles. When Jesus Christ was with them. Look at them in the acts of the apostles. You will see growth. And then come and look at uh, their epistles as well. You will see growth. In fact, Paul the apostle. And if you use the uh, Dick's Annotated Reference Bible, you can line up all the epistles of Paul the Apostle. And look at the dating and rearrange the epistles of Paul, not in the way they are written now like Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, but according to the date. And compare the material in the earlier epistles with the later epistles and see the interaction, see the affection, see the love, see the way he handled people. You will see some improvement. That's why if they grew, they had the capacity to grow, we also we need to grow. And I want to give you areas where you want to consider, you want to grow. Number one, a growing phase. So that you will be able to take on things today you are not able to take on before. Number two, growing wisdom. Wisdom in various areas, handling people, relating with people, handling the work of God, in relating with outsiders from the church. Number three, greater or growing understanding, understanding people. People are not machines, and that we need to be understanding people, understanding people. The more we understand people, the more we understand the work of God and the word of God, the more we'll be making progress in our lives. Number four, growing love. We need to grow in love. So that we are not approaching people the same way today as we approached them last week, as we approached them last month. And even problems of discipline, we are not approaching uh, it in the way that uh, we did it in the past. And you know, sometimes our people will comment, they say, our pastor is getting weaker. Because, you know, he doesn't uh, discipline people today like he used to discipline them. I, I know when we first came, we must pray for our pastor. Because it's like, uh, you know, his fire is going down. His zeal is going down. Because if somebody did this kind of thing two years ago, we know the way that our pastor will act. Now that he's growing older, he's getting weak. No, he's not getting weak. He's growing in love. Is understanding that the things that bothered you as a primary school child will not bother you when you come to university. He is understanding that uh, some of those things are not sinful. They are just the kind of, uh, you know, the people too, they are growing. And because they are growing, we cannot deal with them the way we dealt with them two years ago. It's not that we are becoming weaker when we say, well, I think I just need to turn a blind eye to that action, a deaf ear to that action. It's not weakness, it's growing in love. Number five, it's a growing maturity. Uh, the, 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 the things we say, the way we carry ourselves, we're growing in maturity. Number six, growing communication. We need to improve our communication. 
a one-to-one -one communication and a one-to-one group you are preaching the gospel the way you present it and the things you say you are growing in communication number seven growing responsibility give yourself more responsibility challenge yourself somebody said it this way he said jump down from the cliff and then on your way down you can grow the wings which means don't say that until i have all the things i need that's the only time i will attempt greater responsibility number eight greater or growing administrative ability many of us will feel i'm a pastor i'm a minister i'm a preacher of the gospel i do not need administration and yet when you understand that the anointing may be much if the administrative ability is not there then we can make a mess of your work number nine is growing vision your body your scope your body your vision number 10 growing tolerance and that will link up with growing cooperation with people you are not competing with people anymore you know it's little children they compete and they are always thinking he has what i don't seem to have and they feel threatened because that brother does what i cannot do that brother is approaching the way i cannot approach it because of that they feel threatened when you grow higher, when you understand the growth and you are making progress, you don't feel threatened anymore. You understand there are capacities and abilities God has deposited in you that he doesn't have. But by the same token, by parity of reason, there are some things God has deposited in him that you too may not have. Therefore, there is cooperation and everything will blend together. And then we have uh, number 11, growing interpersonal relationships. You know, as we relate with one another, uh, the, you know, somebody said it this way. said, you frown at the world and the world will frown back at you. Smile at the world and the world will smile back at you. There should be growing interpersonal relationships. And then number 12, growing interest in every individual. You understand? Every individual thinks is the most important uh, person on the planet. And when you approach individuals, if you can uh, plug into them, they think they are the most important. Their name is the sweetest uh, vocabulary to them. And what relates to them is the most important to them. That's the way they picture themselves. And you relate with them that way. You will have growing interest in every individual and growing interest in groups in the church. Uh, we have this group in the church and that group in the church and that group in the church and you are showing growing interest what you are not interested in before now you are showing interest let me quickly give you uh, three points number one more love we need to have more love in first thessalonians chapter three first thessalonians chapter three we're looking at verse 12 and the lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do towards you so we understand that we need more love in fact love is the oil the ointment that is going to reduce the friction between us and our workers us between us and our members between us and the congregation the church just increasing love and don't worry about other things for now many of the things will take care of themselves we don't have too much time number two more light more light you let your light so shine before men that men will see your good works and they will glorify your father which is in heaven and in proverbs chapter 4 proverbs chapter 4 reading there from verse uh, 18 it says and but the path of the jaws is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day number one is more love number two more light and then number three is more life more life let there be life real real life you know what jesus said he's expecting us that we'll be growing in even in life in uh, john chapter 10 verse 10 the second pass, part of verse 10 i am come that they might have life and that they might have it how more abundantly what kind of life number one abundant life and when you wake up in the morning you say this is the day that the lord has made i'll be glad and rejoice in it and make up your mind you know in a single day when you come out maybe at seven o'clock at eight o'clock and then you return maybe at eight o'clock in the night or nine o'clock in the night all together how many hours are you spending outside 
about uh, you know about 12 hours 13 hours 14 hours and you know that the person you are meeting now you may not uh, meet him uh, again for maybe another month uh, plant a smile plant a flower in his life let it be a kind of abundant life that life in christ is a beautiful life and the person goes away you know the fragrance of it the joy of it he will be remembering that thing and uh, if you will do that and then you are planting something good in this life something good in this life and the person will go away and after about two days he's still remembering your smile he wants to see you again because you did, everybody is frowning at him everybody is uh, looking at him as if he's the worst person in society and you are the only one that said something good ask a question ask about his name and what is interesting and what is peculiar to him is uh, precious to you he will remember you and if you have any message to preach after that he comes back he's going to take everything number one abundant life number two the anointed life you have the anointed of god upon your life and the anointing of God upon your life and because of that anointing yokes are being broken you, you are passing on and people have yokes they have difficulties in their lives because you have ab this abundant life this anointed life you will find that good things will be happening number three affectionate life you have affection you have affection you, you you live every day on a new page that is you wake up this morning you act as if i am new in the world this is a new day that is born and i'm born into this world even today which means all the injuries of yesterday went with yesterday the offenses of yesterday went with yesterday the grievances and everything of yesterday went with yesterday this is a new day i meet this person now he thinks he offended me yesterday he thinks he offended me last week but to me this is a new day and i do not remember anything and i relate with him as if he never offended me after all when you forgive you forget therefore because it's a new day there's going to be an affectionate life number four authoritative life that life that reflects the life of christ will carry authority you will just find that uh, you ask it shall be given unto you you seek and you will find you knock and it shall be opened unto you do you know anybody if you will practice this and have this kind of abundant life affectionate life and anointed life people will open doors for you before you even tell them to open anything you ask they will be glad to supply that thing to you because your life is giving and what you are giving you are going to receive in manifold in manifold but if you are stingy you are not giving a smile you are not uh, planting something good in the lives of other people you are not lifting other people up any anybody you see that is falling you trample upon them when you fault you because you know you are going to have your own time you've been trampling upon hundreds of people when it comes to your time god will look away and allow them to be in their natural animalistic nature they will trample on you as well but you know you are lifting up people you are helping people you are encouraging people anytime you have problem it will be the problem of the whole community and your life will be an authoritative life number five an accomplished life you know a life like that the goal you have in life even beyond the goal you have in life you know other people will help you to achieve the goal that you have if you are a person that doesn't care about other people you are not concerned about other people they'll not be concerned about you and any goal you have is greater than yourself you cannot do it alone when you help other people to succeed you will have hundreds and thousands of other people that will rally around you to succeed as well don't even worry about your goal worry about my brother's goal there worry about my sister's goal there and say how can i help him to achieve his goal to achieve his goal to achieve his goal when you are interested and committed in making other people to achieve their goals all of them will rally around they will all support you you will achieve your goal and your life will be an accomplished life in jesus name let's rise up